Hi, I'm Chris from Windows, and hey, you can do this. By which I mean, meet Path 92. I just got to open it and put it in the right place. Path 92 is a AU and VST plugin, and it exists because Path 91 had too many controls and didn't fit into the VCV rack port. So this makes it possible to do a VCV rack uh, path for nutty. Now what is that? It is a Chebyshev filter. What's a Chebyshev filter? Well firstly, see that? It's uh, sine waves. Now if I go and select some of these sine waves, Maybe I will select all the way to zero. You can still kind of see them. If we apply a trebuchet filter, we will get some kind of result, such as that is a trebuchet filter that is only second harmonic. And if we apply a uh, Trebuchet filter that is only third harmonic will get something else. And that looks kind of like a distortion because what distortion is is the application of entirely odd numbered harmonics. And that sounds a little distorting, but not because it's not doing higher harmonics, it's only doing the one harmonic. And this is being done on a sine wave. And we jump back into path 92. And let's throw all of the odd numbered harmonics on there. We've now got something that looks a lot more like a square wave, but still isn't one. And you can dial in various amounts of these harmonics this way. And an interesting side effect of it is that if you're not doing the higher harmonics, you won't get aliasing on stuff that isn't, you know, the the harmonic that you're doing would have to be higher than the frequency you're modulating in order to make it be aliasing. So we could do a little bit of the seventh harmonic here. And if we apply that, we've got something that looks a little bit like a squish topped uh, squarey wavy thingy. And that's the kind of stuff that Chebyshev can do. Although we could also apply a uh, path nutty, we can also apply it inverted. And that does another weird thing. Although it still sounds kind of like lower order harmonics because we're not applying high harmonics here. Whereas if we wanted to do something really weird with it, we could just start applying all kinds of stuff all over the place. and get a weird sort of bizarre wave out of that. Or since uh, Path Nutty allows you to apply only a certain amount, we can do less. And then we get this funny shape, which is a sine wave modulated by the, those various harmonics that you saw. And the idea here is you could use this to maybe take some kind of sine wave in VCV rack and make it be a funny shape. Like we can plainly see that this is a weird shape that you wouldn't necessarily otherwise have. And I will go in and try to do something even weirder, like negative third. We'll have a little second, but a lot of fourth and sixth. Then a little more of this, a little less of that, and a little bit more of that. And now what shape have we got? You can make, say, a LFO that's doing a sine wave, plug this onto it, and perhaps modulate the things. The, the whole idea of releasing this is to make it be able to work with uh, VCV rack 
because the original path nutty had too many controls to include in VCV rack. And well, look at look at those waves. How can you not want to have like an LFO or something? Take a sine wave and then throw that into there. But you can also modulate and automate all of the various controls on there. And it will sort of click a little bit as you move them. But that's you're probably not so much because if you're automating things in VCV Rack, it's updating fairly quickly. And lastly, the trick that we had for like no second harmonic, lots of third. Even harmonics will give you a sort of warmer tone, which is relevant to kind of what we're talking about here. And we'll center these things. Somebody on actually Facebook discovered that if you took just the third and the fifth, maybe not even that much of the fifth, and you applied that, you got a sort of loudinator, a saturator, that had a particularly smooth sound. And the reason for that is it's not actually tracking anything time related at all. It's just a, a wave shaper. And what it's doing is applying this particular curve that if you have lower frequency content going into it, it's specifically going to do only the third and the fifth harmonics and it will refuse to do anything else. So any harmonic that it's not generating will not alias. And so you got this funny shape, which is a very distinct sort of, uh, that's more than a square wave. It's rounding off the top. It's not flattening the top. But as a result of that, what you have is a thing where, let's say we Fade that in and fade that out. This is in a little uh, uh, audio editor rather than Reaper this time, because I just like it. And we have our uh, wave that's now ramping in and out. If you apply the same thing in Path Nutty, this third and fifth with uh, all wet, or you can apply a smaller amount of it if you want what you're going to get is a nice little form of saturation that avoids higher harmonics. Like it will go into your sort of flat toppy area and then the stuff that's even higher harmonic than that will wrap around just a little bit specifically to avoid throwing higher harmonics in. So it actually has a funny compressed quality to it. And one thing that you can do with that is apply it to sounds. And one of the things that I'm talking about in this video, since I'm posting Path Nutty, I wanted to get you up to speed on some of the work that I'm doing. What you see behind me is a special program that I wrote in the Godot engine. Godot is a uh, game development engine, but I'm using it for other purposes. That is generating reverb constants for my reverb algorithms. It's going through and trying every iteration of prime numbers in the reverb matrix and measuring and testing how smooth the uh, interplay is. The very top line is a one-to-one -one, and then gradually we have everything time compressed and it is gauging how smooth the gray or white colored bands it generates are. And in that way, I'm able to test the sounds of the reverb impulses without actually hearing them at many, many, many times a second. So it's grinding away doing that. I'm currently looking at um, 258 millisecond, 7,963 seat arena impulse. Because I have the ability to spell out how many seats in the space I'm creating is. And this is towards my project of wanting to get a uh, Bricosti reverb and then start emulating those things. And the idea is I need reference. 
I need to be able to hear what I'm doing. And the idea is if I use these tools, I should be able to hear anything and dial in a free plugin that will do that very efficiently and uh, be free and open source and you can have it. And in order to do that, the reason I want the Bracosti is I've got to have good reference. I have before gone and uh, done location recording. The Bracosti gives me the opportunity to hear uh, Casey's takes on a bunch of very cool locations, places that it would cost me more than $4,000 to go and travel to. And I wouldn't necessarily be as good at locking those in, but maybe I would. But you gotta, sometimes you gotta go to the place. For instance, there is this, I used to live in Putney, and I discovered a place that is this old church that was sort of disused, and it's a wooden place. Now, reverb algorithms often sound kind of metallic and cave-like, and one of the reasons for that is that the reverb algorithm doesn't necessarily dissipate low frequencies in the same way that an acoustic space does. However, if you go to an acoustic space, you'll hear stuff like, like I said, I have heard sounds of a church and if you take your drums into a real place, you will hear it reverberate and echo but the lows don't sustain as long as they would in like a, a cave or something. It's very different from artificial reverbs. And this is one of the things that Bracosti is able to do. So the goal is to be able to replicate stuff like this in a plugin. Wrap your head around that one for a while. It's an it's a ambitious task, I admit. But, I mean, there's nothing like the actual raw sound. And if anybody's able to capture that, like, and I know that people don't necessarily like the music that I make, you might not like the way that I played, it's not gonna be convenient for me to go and replay this, obviously. Um, but, I do this kind of stuff so that I can hear what things actually sound like, and that's why I want to lay my hands on one of the Bacostis, because that gives me pictures of a bunch of different sounds. Using that kind of reference and tools like this, which is currently generating arenas, uh, virtual arenas, stuff like a uh, 3x3 householder matrix for doing early reflections, I should be able to replicate stuff that is what you would get when you put up some mics in, for instance, a church in Putney. And if you don't believe me, that was fake. I want to get a Bracosti so that I can use those algorithms which I am even now expanding and making better and start putting out reverbs that people can really use. I never said this literally was a church in Putney. I've been to a church in Putney and I made it sound as much like that as I could remember. I hope you like Path 92. I'll talk to you later, and I'm going to be working on uh, the new, the newest version of Two Tape this coming Monday. I was going to do it previously, and then there was a bug in the new sample delay, and so I scrambled to fix that. But you know, bugs permitting, I'm looking into expanding on Two Tape now that I've got some of these other things done. And we do have uh, Orbit Kick, which should be coming up pretty soon. It has been a really intense week of developing this software here in the Godot engine. 
the stuff that calculates out. Um, I can even hit a button here, check this out. I'm searching on a 5x5 five five reverb matrix. If I hit this button and it is settled upon the best that it can get in this particular combination of delay times, it'll pause for a second and then it will draw the reverb plot as grayscale. You can't really see it, unfortunately. But it is a nice even distribution without spots or stripes. And that's the idea. And on that note, hope you like this little video. And I'll talk to you later.